God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. I said, You are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share together Psalm 82, another psalm of Asaph. And in this, he is pleading with God to come in judgment, to bring justice to this earth. For this earth is full of wickedness. The nations have chosen their own gods, and God judges among them. He is the judge of all the earth. Remember what Abraham said when he was told of God's judgment coming on Sodom and Gomorrah. Will not the judge of all the earth do that which is right? Of course, God will do that which is right. Abraham's complaint was, would he judge the righteous with the wicked? Because he knew Lot was righteous. Lot had a relationship with God, but Lot was living in Sodom. Would God's wrath against Sodom mean that Lot was also destroyed? No, the Lord rescued Lot, delivered him out of Sodom when he brought that judgment upon that city. And so Peter tells us the Lord knows how to deliver the godly in the day of temptation, in the day of trial, in the day of testing. For God is the judge of all the earth. But a judge judges at the end. He reviews the things that have happened. He doesn't stop things happening but he brings judgment to bear after the event on the things that have happened. So as judge of all the earth, God does not, does not stop wickedness, except in so far as at a certain period of time he will cut short a person in his wickedness that he does no more. But he does not stop. He allows Satan to test people. And he allows terrible things to happen in the earth. But in doing so, he is setting circumstances by where people can show their own true character. And that character is represented by the teachings of what is the right way to go. There are significant differences between the various religions of the world. We would call between the various gods of this world. And we may not appreciate that when we're brought up within one culture, particularly when we're brought up in a Western culture which has been strongly influenced by the God of Israel and the teaching of scriptures. We think that certain things are right because our culture has taught us that way, but we forget that these things are right because God has said it and our culture has, to a large extent, followed God's way. But people who reject God reject those ways and want to bring in other ways, the ways of other gods. And of course, there are people who worship other gods who come to our land and want to continue to worship in the way of their fathers. Well, in the end, God will judge. Paul told the men in Athens, God has appointed a day whereby he will judge the earth by that man whom he has appointed. And he has testified who he is by raising him from the dead. So we know him as the Lord Jesus. This is consistent with what Jesus himself taught in John chapter 5, that the Father has consigned all judgment to the Son, because he is the Son of Man. Jesus, having experienced life on this earth, while not sinning, knows the pressures that we are under And so he is able to be a sympathetic judge, an understanding judge, a judge who can fully appreciate the circumstances that we are in. And so when we have done wrong, 
the punishment will be appropriate, not just to the error that we've made, but our culpability in making that error, just as the judges of the earth take into account the circumstances of an action, not just the outcome of the action. But the judges of the earth often judge unjustly. They are influenced by bribes. They are influenced by the position of the person in whom they are judging, particularly in a non-Christian culture. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked, particularly the rich and famous and powerful? Selah. The judge is meant to defend the poor and the fatherless, to stand up for those who have no strength to stand up for themselves, to do justice for the afflicted and needy, to deliver the poor and needy, free them from the hand of the wicked. For the wicked will want to encapture and exploit people. The righteous employer will be concerned for his workers, but the unrighteous employer will be exploiting his workers. And that's why some have joined trade unions to try and get strength. But the strength that really saves is the knowledge of God and the strength of God that that is available to us when we walk in his ways. But God's criticism is against the judges of the earth, the leaders of the society who condone evil rather than suppressing it. And when we get politicians in power who use their position for their own advantage, the whole society is in trouble. Do they not know? Do they not understand? They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. If you do not maintain integrity and truthfulness in judgment, then the society will self-destruct. I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Jesus quoted this verse, you are gods, to the Jews when they complained that he made himself the Son of God. But men have the position of God when they are with authority to judge, when they are there as a king and as a ruler of the people. And they can expend great authority. So they have authority like the angels. They have power like the angels. A man who has a position can speak and many other people do his will. I said, you are God. God gave people power to rule other people. But it is only a delegated power. It doesn't make them gods. You shall die like men. The richest and most powerful man will still die and after this is the judgment. You will fall like one of the princes. Again, referring to the mighty angels. There are three that are named, Gabriel, Michael and Lucifer. And Lucifer fell. His great authority, with his great authority, he overstepped the mark and he has fallen. And he has led many of the angels with him. And God has prepared the lake of fire for the devil and his angels. But in the meanwhile, he is influencing many men who are given authority and responsibility. And some of these are following him for their own glory rather than for the service of their society. This contrasts with the Lord Jesus who did not come to be served but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. So the most rich and famous person in the end must die, like every other man. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. In the future, the Lord Jesus shall return in power and glory. He will judge the nations He will be the King of kings and Lord of lords. It's the consistent testimony of the Old Testament and of the New Testament that Messiah shall come, that he is the judge of all the earth. And our prayer, the prayer that the New Testament concludes with, is even so, come, Lord Jesus.